really busy year. Um, especially like, you know, we lost 50% of the year, like everybody in Jiu-Jitsu has been super active. Like for me, it wasn't so much comp competitive. I've done 21 seminars this year. Um, you know, we had like 18 months without the 21 seminars, traveling, teaching leg locks. So I've been really, really busy. A lot of gyms, you know, really expanding the knowledge. It's been fantastic. So thank you to all those gyms. Uh, that's a big, a big thing. Um, competitively, it's been decent. You know, I went back, first one back in just under two years was ADCC. Uh, three submission wins there. Felt a little bit rusty, but I did good. Um, you know, happy to get a clean sweep of subs. Um, and then fortunate enough to get a pick for Polaris. And, you know, I knew it was going to be a really, really tough match with Tom Barrier. He's an absolute killer. Easily, by far, the best brown belt in the country by a mile. You know, if, if you've got that accolade, you easily, you know, black belt level and everything. So, really tough match. Very close decision win for me. I think probably edged it. The fact that I had a few more submission attempts, um, but he positionally was very, very strong. So look, I'm happy. Uh, you know, really, really happy with the year. Um, I think I think it's good to see that. You know, despite COVID lockdowns and all that stuff, it's given people the impetus to really push on and things like that. Now, um, but culminating, I had my baby a couple of days ago, uh, third baby on Boxing Day. Um, so yeah, been quite a busy year, mate. Yeah, obviously. And from the room, big announcement you made after the Polaris, your retirement. Is that end of you compete professionally then? At, at least professionally, I think so, yeah. Look, for me, it's always been about how good can I be, right? I didn't, you know, when I first started, like maybe oh, I'd like to win a regional comp. You know, I mean, I, like I've won Europeans at Masters, I've got submission wins and wins on Polaris, and that to me is the pinnacle, you know. What more really is the, you know, in terms of bettering myself, is it is it reasonable to expect me to get like, win world championships or anything like that, not really, because look, I work a full-time job, I've got a, a young family and I've got a gym and, and responsibility teaching here. And I feel like the last couple of performances I've hit where, you know, I've gotten as good as I can be. Now, I feel like with the growing responsibilities, I will only decline somewhat, you know what I mean? Now, and I'm happy with that, you know, for the first time in jiu-jitsu, I felt gratified and get to a point where I've ticked that box that I've gotten, you know, as good as I can. And I feel like I can still improve and I'm trying training really, really hard now. Um, but it's just very difficult, you know, you're going to get matched up against 20 year olds, 25 year olds that are like full time athletes, which have a fraction of the responsibilities and the stresses I do. So I don't, you know, I don't need to do it for me anymore. I just think I'm, you know, the professional fights are just, I think they're definitely done. I think I'll still compete. I think I'll do regional comps and stuff like that because, you know, you, the fire to compete never goes away. But I don't really need to be taking matches now at the very highest levels of the sport because I've, I've filled that bucket inside my heart, I think. Yeah. You mentioned a certain competitor tempting you back. Is that, is that still true? Yeah, look, if the AJ match came about, I think I'd probably get back on the, on the bike for that. Look, there's... We've had a lot of banter back and forth, you know, whether we call it shit talking you know, or whatever. You know, that's a match I feel very passionate about. You know, I think so. It wouldn't be difficult to, to get back on the horse and try that one. And, you know, he beat me convincingly the first time. Like, make no mistake. You know, there's all the discussion. Yeah, it was meant to be no gi, all this. I was like to cut a lot away. All this kind of shit. That's something that, in my mind, is very, very easy to, to want to go out and do a, a significant performance. So that is a motive, again, for me to, be, to do a professional fight. You know what I mean? Like I say, that wouldn't be about me proving, trying to prove to myself how good I can be, that would be about beating AJ Agazon, that would be sing, you know, a singular achievement in my mind that I need to I need to tick off, so on my terms this time, so definitely if that was on offer, I'd come back for that, but if it if the, if the contract doesn't say AJ Agazon I'm, uh, I'm done on pro fights Yeah, what does 2022 look like for our group of jiu-jitsu? So look, you know what we've managed. We were only a really small team. You know, we before COVID we were like 20 members. We we're up to like 40 members now on the back of COVID. We've doubled in size. You know, Ghouls are very small towns. Only like 18,000 people live here. So we're never going to be a massive gym. But it's continued to build the gym. Continued to build. Um, you know, good competitors that can get up to the elite level. You see, like Oli Bates coming through now on the highest levels, um, show wise. Amazing for for me to produce people. Like that. And I just want to continue to produce guys like that. Seminars, I want to really keep focusing on teaching. Um, something I'm enjoying a lot is innovating leg locks and showing new gyms, new games, stuff like that. But then, most importantly, being a good dad, mate. Um, you know, my, my son's growing up, he's really getting into rough and tumble, but I've got two young daughters now, and that's my primary motive, is being a good dad. So that's what I'm trying to spend a lot more time at home than I did this year, and uh, spend a lot of time being a dad. Yeah. 
Congratulations on the new kid, Melbourne. Have you a good new year? Thank you, brother.